Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. So for today's video, I am going to be explaining how to switch up your current builds, what to place into your build to actually get you somewhat back to where you were before the patch. Now, obviously, whatever I give in this year isn't going to be definitive and the end. It is still going to impact your gameplay massively. All operations in PvE will take double to triple the time that they previously used to, and some of these changes aren't for the best of your abilities. Now, let's start off with the first thing, changing up your mid slot. The way that they have changed up the enemies in the game has influenced that everything requires your mid slot to build out your build. Now, the mid slot is what you would call a sub weapon slot. Now, the sub weapon slot in this case actually is only impacting one aspect of your ability to play, and it is affecting your ability to deal damage. Now, with the Electronic Warfare new additions, that is the sensor dampener, the. Sorry, I don't remember them. The warp scrambler, the sensor dampener, and the tracking disruptor. Oh, and the target painter, sorry, I forgot that this was in the same class. Okay, guidance disruptor, sorry. So here are everything that you need to know about these items. Now, the guidance disruptor will affect your missiles and certain tracking devices. As you can see, it takes off your fall off from your weapons which have a fall off radiance. Now that is guidance disruptors. And when it comes to your, your tracking disruptors, they take off your range skill bonuses and your accuracy fall off adjustments as well. Now, they affect all weapons from what I can tell because my missiles do half the damage when impacted by this uh, disruptor that is in PvE format at the moment. Target painters increase the amount of damage you do to targets and so forth. Now, when it comes up to the Warp Scrambler, the thing about it is it has more strength than, than your Warp Disruptor, but the Warp Disruptor has a greater range than your Warp Scrambler. So there is a trade-off between the two. If you are doing PV, uh, PvP, the Warp Scrambler does give you a much bigger advantage. If you're running a Sensor Dampener and a Disruptor, you definitely have a much bigger edge in trapping somebody with this device. Then you still need... Okay, wait, so let's see. You're running Sensor Dampener, Disruptor, and Predator Warp Scrambler just to reduce the chances of you dying instantly. You can't Webify, so you'd need somebody else to get in there to Webify and so forth. So you have to run diverse camps at the moment. This is one of the things that they try to introduce. However, it is only really benefiting players in that method. When it comes to PvE, equipping stuff such as a Warp Scrambler doesn't help you against your enemies. Let me go down. Oh no, this actually affects micro warp drives. So yes, you could use this to take out a very fast enemy. It will stop them from micro warp driving away from you. That's the only time it will work. So yes, some enemies can be affected directly by this device. However, afterburners are not affected by it from what I can tell. Okay, so let's see what happens when we try to get back to our tanky balls. Now, in order to remain tanky, you need to disrupt the amount of damage you take. So, Guidance Disruptors and Tracking Disruptors are going to be the thing to stop you from taking massive damage. So, if you are running a major tank and you need the tankiness to stay very high, you are going to run this. However, there are going to be certain changes in the way in which you are doing actual combat. Number one, you are going to use a disruptor against enemies locked onto you. You're going to go after the bigger ship with your disruptor to prevent you from taking massive damage. Now, why would you be doing it in this way instead of hitting the smallest ones? Because the smallest ships will take a constant damage at a very low rate if they hit you with disruptors. And if you're taking out their damage, you're only taking out a small chunk of damage that you take every time that they hit you. Yes, it does add up in a cumulative over a long period, but it is better to take away the massive damage that's affecting your ability to regen your shield in the start. Now, energy neutralizers, Nosferatu, 
and a lot of the other modules that are part of the e war uh, abilities are really dangerous at the moment so here's some things for you to consider Weber fires will hit you and stop you scramblers will stop you from using your uh, micro warp drive so be warned about that you won't be able to use your massive speed advantage to get away from ships and generally you will find it on frigates you won't find it on the larger vessels so frigates are mainly your biggest target when it comes to this do not let them get within 20 kilometers of you because they also are running regular disruptors so 20 kilometers is like the maximum cutoff because it can still hit you with the disruptor and that means that they don't have a um, scrambler on them obviously it's a little bit safer you can still warp micro warp drive or afterburn away from them and then hit them with more damage at the later point now when it comes to the disruptors and the guidance computer disruptors if you are using that there you're only using it to reduce the dps that you take so damage per second taken to your health is reduced in this way you're using the sensor dampener to reduce the amount of targets that lock onto you first so any target that's locking onto you takes a little bit longer, giving you a little bit of time to actually do some damage to another ship. And once you have destroyed them, you actually now start taking the advantage. Now, as you can see, this makes a lot of difference to your setup. If you are using the sensor dampener, you really have taken out a massive chunk of your ability from your mid slot. Now, moving on, the next thing you can run in your mid slot is the target painter now okay wait sorry i'm still in defensive now using this the, the disruptors reduces the damage from enemies as i said you can double them or triple them if you just want to be a tank so that's how it will go and that's what you can do to reduce the amount of damage you're taking instantly from enemies and putting one on three enemies is a viable solution it will reduce your damage by quite a bit and it will give you the chance to regen and recover your shield in that time while holding on to other players taking out those enemies while they're disrupting you. So yes, that is one of the viable options. Now guidance disruptors will also help you. You just need to be in the right type of sector. If they have accuracy and accuracy fall off, you reduce their best uh, ranges and force them to come closer to you in combat. So this here will be good against lasers and railguns because railguns have the, oh, no, raz lasers, railgun, Actually, it's good against all weapons, but it is better for lasers and cannons. Sorry, my mistake. I was putting railguns in the same class. It's better to get them to come closer so that you can hit them a lot faster or you can force them to stay within your optimal range where you can hit them while trying to evade them. <laughs> now, this is just to make sure that you can stay tanky. Now, making things a bit more for the assault is the target painter. It is the only counter to the disruptor and the guidance computer disruptor, the tracking and guidance computer disruptors, is the target painter. Multiple target painters will remove the effect of the target disruptor and restore your damage, but it requires multiple. And when you run multiple, you run into penalties on the systems. It drops in an increment, I don't know if they have changed it, if I was correct, it was 17% penalty for the first extra and a 50% penalty for the third extra. So if you are running three disruptors or three tracking devices, that is the fall off that you should be expecting in terms of effectiveness. Now, moving on, there are a lot of things which players will do to keep their targeting up. And that is playing in a fleet. It is the only way to continue with your higher DPS and keeping up with the movement through activities. However, this drastically reduces the bounty from doing activities and where you could have launched um, five two-man teams to clear a sector, you now have to take that entire team into each activity, cleaning out the activities within that sector to make sure you take minimum damage. Long range assaults are no longer so viable because sensor dampener reduction of damage affects even drones so you have to come closer and take some damage in the fight the only thing that these uh, disruptors do is force you to take on higher risks in combat even though long range is meant to reduce your risk they are meant to pull you back in to take higher risk in activities now when it comes to your settings the best settings for you to have on your weapons at the moment is 
high ranged orbits make sure make sure you aren't at the maximum range of your um weapon system so for example if you're running with missiles if you have a 43 kilometer maximum radius try and keep yourself at least five below so that would be about a 38 or 37 keep yourself in that range so that if anybody attacks you you can always counter them with a solid attack and if they attempt to run from you you have a 5k leeway before you have to activate an afterburner or micro warp drive to make up the distance now, I know that these are complex theories and complex things to put into action. Now, I know that the E1 modules are also very dangerous on the close range, which is why I gave that maximum orbit distance and why I'm keeping it in between those ranges. Now, when you pass the level 7 anomalies, you are introduced to battleships. Battleships have an optimal range around 40 kilometers. Make sure you don't exceed 45 kilometers in the battles against large weapons because when you exceed that range you are in full range of their combat power while your combat power is reduced due to accuracy fall off and due to distance and explosive damage and all of the regular uh, problems. Now remember that because a lot of the larger ships in the higher level anomalies are now running micro warp drives. It is the only way that they can keep the distances that they are keeping and the speeds that they move away from opponents in definitely indicates that they have quite a bit of speed to them which means they're 180 meters per second if you had to do it with an afterburner at max effect being almost 200 percent they would only get to about 480 meters per second that means they would just double the distance between me and them over a few seconds but with the micro warp drive they get five times the original bonus and it makes that distance move from 37 to 48 in a rather quick period of time and i have seen that happen to me several times already which indicates that they have micro warp drives now another thing to note in pve is they have reduced the drops that you can pick up from enemies it definitely has been reduced um, from several other players who have been also doing anomalies in different areas they have reported that they are picking up more debris and far less equipment they are picking up small equipment which has low processing power and they are picking up um, very few large pieces of gear which have the high processing requirement in terms of materials so those are the things which you can generally see from the activities now everything to note in between is now going to be noted the patch, <clears throat> sorry, the patch has undoubtedly affected PvP the most. It has now introduced the factor that mining is going to be improving in the amount of income it will have over the next three weeks. So a lot of players will be mining, making it easier for PvP players to go into mining belts and assess, uh, not assess, and assassinate the ships, taking gear and taking loot from them as fast as possible. This has been made purely to benefit PvP, obviously, and it's also being made to benefit the mining. Now, mining prices of things like circulation, you should expect circulation 3 to be almost a billion apiece. If it isn't a billion apiece, at least 600 million for one rig. Now, with the increase in resource prices because of the grind to get um, the faction battleships, you could expect to pay anywhere between, as I was saying, 600 million to a billion. Now with that there being said, the cargo holds on stuff like a retriever is now going to hold up to 20 million per, uh, per pulling of um, resources. Now this is an arbitrary figure, I'm just guessing on the figure. Because of the sudden increases in certain materials within the next four days, being the period when T8 opens, or if I am incorrect, it's three days to T8. So with this here being said, that means that a lot of players have started to buy up materials and it has caused the price of materials to skyrocket in places like Jita and Amar. Now, with this being said, it has now pushed up some of the material prices to at least 10 to 20% higher. Titanium, pyroxide and Okay, wait, no, Noxium has increased by 20%. Um, Zydrine, uh, Isogen, and several others have also increased within the same region of 25-30%. Um, 
Megasite has increased by a whopping 40% if I remember last. Let me just double check the price. Now, these are all manufacturing materials and they have increased in price drastically. Let's see if the pyrite has increased. I know that pyrite didn't increase yesterday, but let's see if it has today. It used to be 25. Okay, now this isn't the right region to be looking through. Oh no, it has increased. Oh, it is still staying stable. Yeah, it's still stable at 25. Tritanium is still at 3. Maxalon was at 30 the other day. It makes it one of the biggest increases in prices. If it is at 40, that is almost uh, 33%. And yes, it has increased by quite a bit. I haven't yet even reached a mass prices, so people are trying to sell out materials quicker on the smaller stations. Yeah, so it is quite expensive at the moment. Cheapest at Jita is 39. So yeah, there's a good indication. Isogen, Isogen was 100 the other day. Let's see where it is at the moment. This is in NALSEC where trading is the cheapest on these materials. So let's go down the list and look at what it has gone to. Whoa, okay, wait. This has increased even more since yesterday. It looks like the full 30% has been exceeded. Yeah, it definitely has been exceeded. I don't know why it isn't allowing me to see the rest of the list. 170, 172. I hope those aren't the maximums. No, it can't be the maximums. It isn't keeping it in order. Yeah, it definitely has increased by almost 90% from two days ago. So post um, update, it was around 110. It had started to increase already. And now it is at this massive rate of 190 in certain regions. Noxium's price seems to have increased drastically as well. Let's see if I am correct or incorrect. Now, with everything that I am discussing here, you should know that you should take it with a little bit of extra caution because some of these prices don't link up directly to the market. So Noxium prices are still holding steady at 1750. That means that they have taken a small 20%, actually between 10 to 20% increase in their price. Zydrine was at that previous rate. It most probably has gone up quite a bit. Let's see if it is past uh, 1850. That would be at least, yes, it is. It has uh, skyrocketed past the 2250 mark, making it much more expensive than it once was. Now, let's see Megasite, one of the biggest uh, minerals. It hasn't increased by the looks of it. 4.2 is a regular figure for it at some stations. If it is above 4.4, 4, then it has increased drastically. Okay, yes, it has increased as well. So about a 10% increase in megasite, no, sorry, 20% increase in the megasite value is something that you should be getting ready to see more regularly at different places. Looking at the increase, it isn't something that you should be shocked by. This should be going on everywhere. Now, I don't even know if Morphite is on the list for any of the ships. It doesn't seem to have a very high demand, so it might not be the most expensive of material. Let me just see what to get it out of. Okay, so it is a very rare material. Let's see what else you get from its uh, rock. You only get one item out of it. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, my reprocessing isn't so high on that level. Now, when it comes to reprocessing other items, they are growing in value rapidly at the moment, such as some ship debris being over half a million a piece. That's because of the individual pieces 
being really sought after for building up circulation and uh, mining rigs due to the increase in demand for mining at the moment. When it comes to reprocessing, it has lost a lot of its um, value due to the reduction in drops. Now, this is just the basis of where things have gone wrong. I hope that I haven't uh, undercut a lot of things which have been done. Now, they have improved the relationship for mining in the game. Mining can go a lot easier provided you have PvP escorts who can defend you against um, quick raiders who are coming in to actually get the kill and steal your resources. Now, this means having a lot of PvP players around while it also means that taking on events like PvE is going to become less and less common for players with them taking longer to complete. This is going to make mining an extremely expensive activity. Expect it to cost you between 1 to 2 billion to outfit a retriever to actually retrieve enough um, resources in a belt for you to be at the optimal range. Let's see if any higher level harvesting equipment is on the market. Sorry, that ships. I doubt that this is on the market. No. I'm just looking through them quickly, hoping that somebody has left some of this on the market somewhere. No, nothing at all. I know for a fact that I have sold single diode miners. So let's see if any of these are available. Yeah, there's several of them available at the moment. I have sold an ion miner as well at one point. So yes, so you could do retriever uh, mining with the strip miners at a higher level. No doubt that will be a lot uh, more efficient than it currently is. Or you could just go and jump straight into a Venture 3 and use your high-end miner to try and get out the optimal amount of ore from the belts. Now, what is the difference in the mining capacity? 49 cubic meters per second or 49 cubic meters per hall. Wait, let me see what's the MK9 strip miners. I know that I run one of these. 579 meters cubed each time. Okay, yes, so it does make some sense. That is what it does every time you activate the mining drill. That's what it can pull out from a belt in an instant in one minute. That is the capacity that it should fill. And considering that, it tells you how long it takes to fill up the hall on each of your uh, miners. Now, considering all of this, players are also going to have to buy the mining rigs. Now, let me go down to your engineering. I'm sorry that this video is so long. It's just trying to explain the difference. Miner circulation. Now, these will start to drop in price over the next few days due to the introduction of Miner Circulation 3. As you can see, it has dropped severely. 110 million is a very reduced price for them and you can't expect it to go up drastically in the next few days. So this is going to be where I'm cutting off this video. There is a lot more to talk about when it came to the differences in the game. A lot of players are going to quit because of the extreme nature of PvP that's going to come out with a lot of players attacking miners. As you can see, they don't want to introduce the PvP pure combat style where you have to fight other players initiating combat. That is something they should try and make a PvP arena or PvP fighting one-on-one -on -one instead of just gate camps and attacking uh, defenseless ships. So I hope that this year does change in the next few days. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Oh, and before you go, leave a like and comment on my video and consider subscribing to the channel. A lot of people who do watch my videos haven't subscribed as yet, so just hit the subscribe button and you can keep in touch with any information that I get. Thank you all. Have a good day.